Hey folks, Boogs here. Time for another Armour Brief video. Thanks again for your feedback and the reception on the last video. It was a nice welcome back for the channel. If you would like a separate guide on how to play the ZTZ-99A from the last video, and especially after the recent update to its armour, then please do let us know in the comments and we can sort this out for you. Please check our recent community post that tells you what has changed with the ZTZ since the last armour brief went out. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at our next vehicle brief. This will be on the, the ZBD-04A, which is the infantry fighting vehicle for the PLA faction. One interesting feature of this vehicle is that it uses the 100mm main gun with the 30mm secondary gun as seen on the Russian BMP-3. Now this introduces a very interesting mechanic that we will discuss in this video. Right then, let's jump in. First up, the speed. The ZBD has the lowest top speed of any IFV in the game at 55 km per hour, which is lower than that of the Bradley. However, its reverse speed is second quickest at 45 km an hour, just lagging behind both of the British Warriors. While let down by its forward speed, it enables it to back out of very tough fights quickly or pull behind cover when spotted by the enemy. Next, let's discuss the armament of this vehicle. As you can imagine, there is a variety of different ammunition types that are available because of the use of the 30mm coaxial as well as a 100mm main gun. Let's start with 100mm. It holds 22 high explosive rounds and 3 anti-tank guided missiles. The HE, however, a very slow velocity, which means they drop off very quickly. This is quite similar to the HE on the BMP-1. Up to the ideal 300 meter engagement range of this ammo type, it is extremely effective, especially against soft targets and infantry. Beyond 300 meters, it still works, but it becomes a bit more difficult to aim due to how slow the round travels. Now, the ATGMs are similar in their performance to the ones fired from the ZTZ 99A and the T 72. These do not deal as much damage as the Cornet Auto that we find on the BMP 2 and the Bradley. Okay, next, let's discuss this 30mm autocannon secondary. It can fire both AP and HE, up to a total of 500 rounds that can be carried. This is divided into 200 AP and 300 HE. This ammunition load is the most out of any IFV in the game. The vehicle also has access to a coaxial 5.8mm machine gun, which carries 300 rounds. These do not have to be reloaded. Let's keep going and have a look at the reload rate of each weapon type on the vehicle. The 100mm gun takes 5 seconds to reload for both the high explosive and the anti-tank guided missiles. This is a lot faster than the BMP-1 mains gun, which sits at 7.5 seconds, but the ATGMs are slower to reload than the ones used on the Bradley. Further to this, the 30mm secondary gun has a rate of fire of around 325 to 330 rounds per minute, which means it sits just shy of the CTAS. Finally, the turret that houses these guns has a rather slow turret rotation of 10.5 seconds. This is unsurprising given the weight. Notably, this turret rotation is the slowest of any modern IFV presented in squad. The other modern IFVs have turret rotations in the range of 6 to 8 seconds. Without out of the way, let's talk about the health, supplies, crew and other important details about this vehicle. Now the ZBD-04A has a health pool of 1250 HP. This is on the low side but puts it in line with a BMP-1 and BMP-2. The health associated with the turret mechanism though is quite low, similar to the BMP-1. This makes it very easy to disable. So if you are hull down and take a blow to your turret, chances are you're pulling back and repairing. Speaking of being hull down, watch the slope that you place your vehicle on because it has a very poor gun depression of only negative six degrees. This puts it in line with most other Russian vehicles. Now in terms of elevation though, the gun can reach up to 60 degrees, which is okay, but nothing spectacular. Now the vehicle, as is standard for other IFEs, can carry 600 ammunition supplies. 
It requires two crew rolls to operate, which sit in the driver and gunner positions. It can also carry eight infantry, reducing to seven though if the commander seat is in use by the vehicle squad. Okay, so some other important details that should be noted are that the engine and ammo rack are placed in certain positions that you need to know. The engine is on the left side if you're looking head on to the vehicle and the ammo rack is located beneath the turret on the right. Because of the use of an autoloader, this ammo rack is in the form of a carousel. Next, we'll look at the armor profile. So simply put, only 25mm caliber weapons and above can penetrate the vehicle from the front. 12.7 though can be used to penetrate the sides and rear. Looking at this visually, we can see that the shooting of the red areas will cause damage, but also cause the turret to become disabled. This is an easy and quick way to reduce the effectiveness of the vehicle if you're coming up against it. Deadly blows would require shots of the ammo rack, location shown here in green. Now, if I'm with a tank, you want to hit exactly this area as it will reliably one-shot kill the vehicle. Shots to the orange areas will damage the vehicle and could cause damage to the engine, but the engine has a bit more health pool than the turret. So if you want to quickly knock out the vehicle or at least reduce its effectiveness, go for the turret. Finally, let's take a look at the sights that are going to be used by the gunner. Here we can see three sets of ranger markers. The left is for the coaxial machine gun, the center is for the 30mm autocannon, and the rightmost reticle is for the 100mm main gun. Respectively, these guns are zeroed to the small chevron labelled RF in the centre to ranges of 600m, 1000m and 100m. Another thing to note is that this chevron is where to point the turret for accurate range finding. This range finder displays a value in red at the top of the gun sight. Also listed in red, is the remaining rounds for the selected weapon. And if you can read Chinese, you're told the ammo type selected. When fully zoomed in with this sight, only the range marks for the autocannon are displayed. This is because the doctrine for Chinese operators of this vehicle are that only the 30 millimeter gun should be used for distances that require such levels of magnification. With all that out of the way, let's conclude and give our opinion on the vehicle. So this vehicle is suited mainly for infantry support on both assault and defensive operations. This is backed up by the amount and types of ammunition that it can carry, the majority of which are high explosive. But this vehicle can still be used in many other ways. It could be used at long ranges with a 30mm auto cannon and using AP to take out vehicles, or at ranges between 300 and 400 meters where the main gun shines. This vehicle does, however, struggle at close-in anti-vehicle operations against two main foes. Tanks, where its weak ATGMs lack the ability to deal significant damage, and fast-moving wheeled APCs such as the BTR or LAV. This stems from its slow turret rotation and poor turret armour that makes it easy pickings for these types of vehicles. So, choose your engagements and distances wisely. All in all, we have a vehicle that poses a good threat, especially to enemy infantry. However, as with all infantry-focused vehicles in the game, it relies on a supportive, friendly team and good coordination to shine in its abilities. And that's all folks, thanks for watching. We hope this new style is more interesting. If you have any comments or feedback, then please do chip in. Now next week, we'll talk about the PLA's ZBL-08 APC a vehicle that plays similar to the BTR, but in some layers carries anti-tank guided missiles. This one will definitely be interesting, so make sure you are subscribed with the notifications enabled so you don't miss it. Thanks again folks, Boogs out.